Good ground. Good ground. Are you good ground tonight? Yes, sir. All right. I believe you are. I want to talk to you. Hallelujah. I got some good stuff here. I, I think I do. You think I do? All right. You know I do? Okay. Well, I do. I, I'm, I'm, uh, the word is good. You know, I'm bringing the word with me. How many of you ready to, uh, you know, I, I know I've been, seems like I've been challenging you a little bit lately. Have you noticed that? Okay. It's going to get more intense. Because I want, I want you to have God's best. And, and God has shown me some things. Um, you know, I'm growing too. But um, I just want to challenge you, man. God, God's got so much for you. He's got so much for you. Turn with me, please, to Luke chapter 14. I'm going to continue. I started a couple, well, last, last Wednesday, actually, talking about having the mindset of a finisher, having the mindset of a finisher. And um, we're, um, we're, we're digging deep into some things. And I preached this years ago, and I can probably preach it probably every year. Um, and it was so easy to start something and not complete it. Uh, we talked, we're talking about how, you know, if we look around us amongst us, and we may even be included in that amongst, we can see a lot of people with that great ideas, great talent, great gifts, even great resources in it. But somehow it's difficult for people to finish what they began. Yeah. And Jesus addressed that. He addressed it. And the kingdom lets us know over and over that Nothing happens overnight. And so we have to get the, don't get me wrong, I believe miracle. I believe we should have miracles, but I have, I, I, we can't live by them. <laughs> we can't live by them. We, God doesn't want us to live by them. You know what he wants to live by? Yeah, and the word. You know, miracles are for people, typically for people that either they run out of time or they don't know better. But he wants us to live by word, by, 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 by faith and by the word, and we can produce whatever we need. How many, how many of you would rather every payday have to believe God, Lord, come on, Jesus, come on, Jesus, come on, Jesus, come on, Jesus. Or every payday, you, you got more than enough to write a check or do a debt. Well, most Folks don't write checks anymore, but you know what I'm saying. So, so that's the that's the way I look at it. Is I rather I rather live with all with my needs always met than having to have them met every 30 days. Amen. I know it sounds more exciting. Oh man, I believe in God, and boy, 11:59, I got a knock on the door, and that was my provision. I I rather have a you know a, 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 it's already there. So anyway. So, so I'm that's why I don't, I, that's why I pause. I say if, I, if I go down that road, I end up somewhere I don't need to go. But, um, but I don't believe that's God's best. But, but what God is telling us is there's a life that I have that you can, you can get out of that always, that crisis mode and get into the, the abundant life mode. Amen. And so we talked about that. Now, John chapter 14, I want to begin here in verse 28. What did I say before? What did I say? Okay, well, you guys can join me over in Luke, please. <laughs> uh, I should be joining you, I guess. Luke chapter 14. And I'm going to be pretty, pretty deliberate and, and forthcoming, um, I think. Luke 14, 28. For which of you intending to build a tower? How many of you? How many people here building a tower? You building a tower? What kind of tower you build? Cell tower? Tower of terror? <laughs> How many of y'all been on the Tower of Terror? This is a Universal Studio. I went on that joke one time. It, that's when you just like, don't you ever put me back on here. <laughs> I'm like, we're gonna have fun. Come on, let's scream. Everybody scream. And she's like, boy, don't you ever even think about it. I can't even walk over there by it. I like, I like roller coasters, and I like, I like all of that. Jumping, fall, free fall and stuff. 
I know I got issues. Don't you judge me, though. Don't judge me. Okay, okay, I asked how many people building a tower. Okay, I had a couple people raise their hand. So 99.9% so .9 of people not building a tower. But you're building a life. You're building a family. You're building a marriage. You're building a career. You're building, you're building a legacy. You're building, you're building a Christian life. See, you're building something. And so even though Jesus is talking about a tower, using a tower illustration, we're all building something. So what he's talking about, okay, tower, fine. But, but, but anything you're building, whether it's a, a doghouse or whether it's a, a, a Fortune 500 business, these, what we're about to talk about, they apply. But I don't even want to talk about that other stuff. I want to focus on your, the Bible said we can be like a tree planted by the rivers of water who bring forth his fruit in this season, and his leaf does not wither. And whatever he does, whether he's building a tower, doghouse, career, business, marriage, church, ministry, it will, whatever. That's a guarantee from Scripture that I don't have to be a failure. Amen. That's a guarantee from Scripture. That's a promise from God that I don't have to fail at anything. Okay, I said I won't be a point. No, I don't have to. I, I, I don't have to win a few, lose a few. I may lose some battles, but I'll always win the war. And so this, these are, I don't know, when you read the Bible, which is God's love letter to you, he's talking to you. He's like, listen, I got something for you. See, this is, this is why I don't judge myself based on where other Christians are. You, I judge myself based on what Jesus said. And if he said, I can have peace that passes all understanding, doggone it, I'm going for peace. And I'm not going to stop until I get it. So I want you to encourage you, read the Bible like it's God speaking to you personally. Because you know why? Because it is. It is. And it doesn't matter. I love him for the, it. Does, he doesn't look at me like, see, you, if you hadn't have done that. See, five years ago, I tried to tell you five years ago, he doesn't do that. He, he, he took reverse out, and he said, let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. Amen. So, so you may not be building a tower, but you're building a life. You're building a, you're building a, a life of power, purpose, and passion. Okay, let's read it again. He says, for which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down when and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it, not just start it, but to finish it. And so we talked a lot about that, and we said that he's talking about, you know, th that there should be some deliberation. Whatever you begin to start, there should be some, some deliver, deliver, deliberation. Now, one of the major reasons that many don't finish is lack of resolve. It's a lack of resolve. And a resolve is born out of sitting down and counting the cost. What are some of the possibilities? What are some of the things that can happen? What are the things that, what are some of the things that I'll encounter along the way? There's some things you, you already know. Something, obviously, there'll be surprises. You can't know everything, but, but it's, at least sit down. And that's why it's good to talk to somebody wiser than you or been on the planet longer than you. Why? Because they can share some things with me that, okay, you may want to consider this. Uh, this is probably going to happen, okay, and, and this is something that you can pretty much count on and all of that kind of stuff. Well, that's, that's part of counting the cost. So when I consider the potential obstacles before I face them, that helps me develop. That helps me develop an inner resolve. Even before I face them, when I start considering them. Okay, so what are you going to do if somebody walk up to you and tell you you stink? You know, predetermined response. What are you going to do when you have more month left than, than money you have? Okay, so what are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are, you, are you going to go crazy? Are you going to quit? Or are you going to like, oh, no, 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 no. God is faithful. What are you going to do? So anyway, we talked about that. So when I consider things before I face them, I develop an inner resolve. Hallelujah. You know, I know this is not true, but sometimes it seems so. you, you, you talk to some people, even yourself, even myself sometimes, we, things happen and we act like, oh my God, why is this happening to me? 
Why not? Life happens. And I told you last, I told you Sunday, we have to get comfortable with the fact that we will have opposition. What do you mean get comfortable? <laughs> I get comfortable with it. I don't, and I'm, I'm not saying I like it, but I have to get comfortable with it. In other words, I'm not going to fall all out. Oh, my God. No, no. We got opposition. Hey, babe. Yeah, what are you doing? Uh, we got some opposition and resistance here. <laughs> this, yeah, I just need to know. Okay, cool. But I have to get comfortable with that because, see, <laughs> didn't God say he always causes us to? Yeah. Then he said, this is the faith that overcomes the world. So, so, so we have to overcome, and we have to, we have to uh, 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 triumph. So I'm getting comfortable. Why can you be comfortable? Because I have the wherewithal to deal with it. Amen. And here's the other thing. No other reason. Psalm 34 says, many of the afflictions of those that want to live for God. And, and Paul actually said, even those who even want to live for God. I ain't saying they live, they are, but want to. They're going to face persecution. So I have to get comfortable with that. A, part of it is a compliment. <laughs> okay. Boy, y'all don't like it when we talk like that. <laughs> but part of it is a compliment. Some of the stuff, you know, maybe you've been attacked and you've been attacked. Whatever. Some of it is a compliment that I got something he wants. I'm about to step into something, a place he doesn't want me to go into. Because he knows that his jig is up messing with me. If I can just endure this and get through this, it's all over but the shouting. So, um, so many, 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 yeah. So, and then, you know, you tell yourself, too, this will work for my good. Now, I, um, tonight I want to, I want to double down and drill down on an aspect of this message that I, talked about Sunday and that's excuses excuses and you know we're talking about having the mindset to finish and part of part of being able to finish is being able to stay motivated from start to finish because again it's so easy to start something but can I stay motivated inspired and strong in the midst or until the end. Paul said, I fought a good fight. I run my course. I have finished my race. And, and he said he finished his course with joy, didn't he? Yeah, he finished it with joy. Jesus said, for the joy set before him. So it's something about that joy. It's something about joy. See, if you don't have any joy, but, well, Nehemiah said, it, no, it was Nehemiah, yeah, the joy of the Lord it's my strength. So part of my, part of my, I didn't even think about this just now. Part of me staying inspired and motivated and strengthened to the, to the end is my joy level. That's where your praise level is so important. You know, if somebody passed out of here and, and we have the medical people or those who are trained in CPR, first thing they would do is check the pulse. Right? They would check your pulse and see, okay, is, 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 is the ticker yeah, it's something still ticking. Well, you know what your pulse is on your spiritual life? Your joy. Your praise and your worship. See, if I want to find out what kind of condition your spiritual life is in, I don't need to take a blood test. I can just check your ticker and see where your joy level is. Because if the devil can steal your joy, he can steal your goods. He can steal your anointing. He can steal your calling. He can steal your passion. Well, he can't steal your passion. He can divert it. He can cause it to go somewhere else. So joy keeps you in the midst like you've been fighting all day long. You come to church. You're like, okay, what, how you doing? Round 15. Come on. Did you say, you mean stop 15? No, round 15. I'm in this fight, Pastor. I'm about to get a unanimous decision. Oh, oh don't worry about how big my eye is right now. Don't worry about that knot on the side of my face. I'm winning. Ah. Okay, all right. So, so we, we're talking about um, finishing, and then now we're talking about joy. I said this Sunday. I thought it was so good. I've been thinking about it all day. <laughs> to live on the level God made you to live and made available to you, you have to discipline yourself to let go of excuses. 
And, and the reason I want to stay on it, I feel like I'm supposed to stay on it, is because excuses are so pervasive that sometimes we've convinced ourselves that I'm telling myself the truth about me. So I'm on a, I'm, a, I'm not, I think, I don't think I have, I got one more scripture. Other than that, I'm a talk. And, <laughs> and I'm just, I'm gonna go over some of the things I said Sunday, but I'm gonna get, I'm gonna, I'm gonna slow down. And I really want you to look at this. Now we, we give the CD away for free and which, I don't know how much long I'm gonna do that. Cause sometimes it, folks don't invest something. They're like, uh, you know, they put it in the bag, you don't look into it. But the, this is so powerful. If you, could, if you can learn how to live truth with yourself, if you can, if we can get to the point where we don't lie to ourselves and pretend. Didn't Pastor talk about that last week? Yeah. I think Pastor Friendly mentioned that. If we can get to the point where we quit pretending to ourselves. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing how free we are and then how much how, how, how far we can, how, how quick we can accelerate to the known goal. There's an African proverb that says that there's no enemy within. The enemy without can do you no harm. You got to get victory over you first. Quit trying to change people. You can't, changing you is a full-time job. You can't change people. I mean, I've been trying to change her for 40 years almost. Yeah, I noticed I'm looking over here. Because she got me trained. Don't, you can't look at me and say that with no straight face. But no, but no, but no. Um, um, changing ourselves is a full-time job. And part of, cha part of change is eliminating barriers to 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 yourself. And I'm, I'm going to show you some of the things I, I say to myself to help me get past excuses. I told you last week, um, I, was, I was a master. Uh, I'm, I'm, a re I'm rehab. I'm, I'm, I'm rehabilitated now in finishing. But I was a master excuse until this colonel brought me in his office and, and I believe it was God. Now, I didn't think it was God at the moment. Because God don't use that kind of language. <laughs> but I got the message. <laughs> Amen. Okay, now, um, Luke 14, please. Now, one of my heroes, one of my heroes, I, I read his biography a couple of times. Uh, I, everything I can get on, a, well, not everything I can get, like videos. Uh, George Washington Carver. He, is a, um, he, he was a black chemist and uh, inventor. He had over 300, over 300 inventions with the peanut over 118 with that sweet potato. That's where that sweet potato pie came from. <laughs> that sweet potato pie. Thank you, George. <laughs> but, um, but um, yeah, in the 1800s, or the late 1800s, early 1900s, he was, he was, I mean, this is a black man down, he was responsible for changing the economic uh, in the South with all those inventions. Mm. Peanut oil, you know, uh, President, uh, 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 I think it was Eisenhower, said, yeah, man, you know, George turned him over to peanut oil for that moisturizer, peanut oil, yeah. Henry Ford, one of him, he said, can you please come work with me? He said, no, nah, I'm going to say I got to help my people. Amen. Yeah, Henry Ford, he, he, this was in the 1800s, black dude, black dude, and in the 1800s, from the South. And he, the presidents and all of them, they came, they, they wanted to know what he knew, they wanted to take advantage of him, but here's what he said. This is why I said all of that. <laughs> he said 99% of people's failure is because they make excuses. 99% of people's failure is due to, uh, they have a habit of making excuses. So we want to get rid of the excuses, don't we? Okay, Luke chapter 14, I want to begin reading in verse 16. Then he said to him, this is Jesus talking. He was telling the parable. A certain man gave a great supper and invited many and sent his servant at supper time. What time? time. Okay. To say to those who were invited, come on, for all things are now ready. Some of that sweet potato pie, George, George Washington Carver, 
told us how to fix it really. <laughs> anyway, uh, but they all with one accord began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excuse me. Wow. Now, I'm going to read the rest of it. Think about this. When, when were they eating? Supper. It's supper time. When is supper time? When? What time is supper time at your house? Seven? What else? Whenever I get home, after you get done preaching. Uh, how many of y'all haven't had, how many of you have not had supper yet? Oh, my God. Okay. Okay, y'all fat? Man, that's, okay, 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 but thank you. So, so it, supper time is in the evening. Okay, so he was invited to the dinner, right? When? At supper time. But he said, I can't come because I want to go look at this land I just bought. It's supper time. You can't see the land. Well, well, you can't see. No, he wasn't talking about a plot. He wasn't in Anchorage. He was, it, it, that's my land. So, so this guy, make it a, you can't even go out there and see the land. And where you were, ain't no light, there's no electricity out there. But he making up this lame excuse. I can't come to the dinner, man. I, I, I just bought a piece of land, and I got to go, I got to go see it. I must go see it. Okay, okay. How many of you have purchased some real estate without seeing it? Yeah. So you see how lame that is? Let's read on. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, okay. So supper is normally at night. Okay, all right, all right. All right. Verse 19. And another said, uh, I have bought five yoke of oxen, of mules, and I'm going to test them. I asked you to have me excuse. Okay, wait a minute. Now, they, they probably had a mule for plowing. What time is this? It's night. And he said, I'm going to go, my five oxen, so I'm going to hook my mules up to the, to the, uh, uh, plow and I'm going to go test them. Now you already spent money for them. You don't test drive a car after you paid for it. I'm, try, I'm, I'm belaboring this point so you can see how crazy this is. And so, and what you, and, and okay, Louis said, Louis said you have a light. What kind of light you got to plow with? You going to take your cell phone and hold it out there? <laughs> Lame. Okay, let's see. Let's keep it. Let's keep it moving. And still another said, "I have married a wife, and I can't come." <laughs> Boy, she got you pecked already. <laughs> don't use that. Okay. Doctor Dev say, "Don't use that one." I'm sorry. Which one, what can I use? Henpeck, henpeck means she controlling them. That, that still happens, huh? He's saying what she told him to say. <laughs> tell that man, tell her, you know how they do? Tell that man you can't come. You know how they do? You know how, Tell them, tell them we not tonight. We can't come. You can't. <laughs> we got stuff to do. You got, you got, you got to fold the laundry. <laughs> no, I, I know them. Amen. Okay, I was about to make a point. Okay, you see how you see how lame those excuses are. Now you know I'm gonna ask you some questions. 
You see, 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 excuses only make sense to the one that's telling it. <laughs> Most people you tell it you to, they see right through it, they just don't say anything. And you've convinced, because you've been, you've been working this thing. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm going to tell him. No, I ain't going to tell him that right there. Okay. You know, you know what you Okay, 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 here it is, here it is, here it is. <laughs> and so, so by the time you, you present your excuse, it's fully developed. I was talking to Lynn, because uh, the other day, a little man, uh, my grandson, I was like, see, boy, that's, that's the way God wants us to be. She said, hey, Bob, you want to, um, you want you want you want me to um you wanna you, you what you wanna stand up or sit up? Yeah, you wanna stand up like a big boy? He said no. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> no. <laughs> and that's how he does. I mean, he does it. But you wanna get some water? No. You wanna go inside? No. No long explanation. <laughs> No, no. Well, you know, I'm I'm really thinking about wanting to go inside, but you know, right now I'm I, I'm I'm in in the mini valley of decision. No, he don't do all that. No, that's it. What we doing now? Most of us stay too long on trying to explain. You gotta explain everything, cause the longer you talk, the more you slip over into a lie. That's it. You coming to the park? No. That's a complete sentence. Right. Right. You don't need to know why. Right. You don't need to know why. Unless, unless I told you I was coming and then I'm not changing. Then, then I change my mind. Then, then maybe, maybe I'll tell you why. Because normally, normally, if you tell somebody the truth, after you tell them, after you give somebody a no, normally if you tell them the truth, you hurt their feelings. So you, so you got to fabricate something to kind of ease the blow. That's what these cats were doing. And so we were laughing at them. Well, let's think about some of the excuses we come up with. I, have, I got them up here. <laughs> I'm going to read them. Some of your excuses. Some of our excuses. Okay, but let's finish this. Let's finish this. So, so, uh, so, uh, so they didn't want to come. Because there's a major message in here. So they didn't want to come. Now think about this. They were coming. The Bible says uh, um, a great supper. I don't know what, what it says. Yeah, a great supper. So this was, this, was, this, was like, this was like huge. This wasn't like they weren't invited to a funeral or something or some dry lecture. They were invited to a great supper, handpicked. And they were reluctant to come. Verse 27, so the servant came and reported the thing to the master. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to the servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in here the poor, the maimed, and the lame, and the blind. Now, I want to spiritualize this for just a minute. And here's the gist of why I'm, I'm teaching this. And Jesus was calling them. It's kind of like, See, Jesus calls us into great things, and he's always inviting us into something special and something, come on, come on up higher. He's always, always trying to bring us into something that, that we, we don't know about, but something that's awesome where we've never been before. He's often trying to get us to grow. Come on, come on, grow, come on, grow out of this. You're, you're bigger than this. And so his job is to, to, to invite us into a relationship with him that you never had before. And he's always putting his finger on things in our life. Say, come on, come on, baby. Come on, you can do this. You don't have to, you don't have to envy those guys you see on TV or, or those books you read. I got that for you. I got, I got more than that for you. You don't ever have to compare yourself. And so he's always calling us into some things. He's always... He's always making some things plain to us, and we always have those ambitious moments. And this is what he's doing. He's calling you in here. He said, listen, listen, listen. You, you, you can get to the place, but when you speak it, it's a done deal. You speak it, you got to keep on going down to Freddy's and, and come back tomorrow, and that thing died, that thing you talked to. Yeah, he said, I'm calling you to a life of peace with all hell breaking off 
around you and, and all all this everybody's like oh my god and you can be you can be like the rock of Gibraltar you can be so strong and so settled in your heart I'm calling you to that I'm calling you to a place where the devil thinks twice about attacking you and yours I'm calling to a place where you can walk in discernment and and confidence I'm, I'm calling you to that it's an invitation come on it's an invitation to walk in this, this confidence and this power. It's, a, it's an invitation to bring to a place where you don't just, no longer, you know, I'm not putting up with, I'm not putting up with mediocrity. Mediocrity is not a part of my DNA anymore. No, no, calling to a place where you just expect, you expect results. And you, like I said, it, you, with excuses, you, you got to discipline yourself to get rid of the excuses because you, you'll, you'll have results or excuses, but you cannot have both of them. Both of them, can, they can't coexist. But he said, I'm bringing you to a place where, where, where you need a high-powered telescope to look at how far you come. Tonight, this is a word for this, who was ever here. I don't know what it is, but some of you are seeped in fear, and you become so comfortable with it that you've given it all kind of names. And you're afraid to, to step. You know you need to, but you're afraid of falling flat on your face. Fear will paralyze you. And God is telling you tonight, I'm calling you out of fear. Come on. Come out here. Come out here. Come out here where you got to trust me. So you need everything. So you need everything just right where you can control it. God said, no, come on out here. Come on. Amen. Like he told Peter, come on out here. Well, you got to keep your eyes on me. Well, you got to trust me. So some of you are here tonight, you're not really trusting God because you're in fear. You trust him over here or there, but God is telling you to come. I hear where, where you where you gotta trust me and let me be your God. Watch me be your God. Yeah. So he's calling you. And know what will keep you bound up and paralyzed in fear? Excuses. Excuses. And they only make sense to the one telling them. Just like we sit back like, oh, hand pack. Uh, who goes out at night? Just as ridiculous as this looks to us. That's how ridiculous your excuse is and my excuse is in light of who we're serving. Wow. Thank you, Lord. So he said, come on. Come on. Upgrade your relationship with me. You've been on the same level for too long. Come on, upgrade your relationship. Give attention. Let me get your individual attention. Let me get, let me get some of the best of your day. You know, can I get some of the best instead of the leftovers? I love you, and you can keep coming to me with your crisis, but man, it sure would be good to just fellowship with you. How you doing? Lord, you got anything you want me to do on your universe today? You got anything you want to do today? Is the world flat or is it round? Don't ask Dave that question. I mean, I mean, God is speaking to us, and until we get beyond the excuses, um, it, it, we, it won't work. Amen. So I want to talk to you about moving forward now in, in your relationship with God. That's, that's my angle tonight. I'm going to still talk about the excuses, but, you know, our relationship shouldn't be static. I should be stronger today than I was last year or last month. I should, I should know more word. I should have more word active in me than I did uh, l last year, and I'm not. It's, I'm not a putting down anything. If, if if this is locating you, that's fine. And you're just like, okay, wow, that's 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 me, and that's fine, that's fine, because you you're here, and God will speak to you. But but at the same time, man, don't 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 
Don't let yourself get robbed. Don't let excuses rob you of what God wants you to have and what you can experience. And then the people attached to you, they can experience something they've never seen out of you either. Excuses will rob you of the of the of the unspeakable joy. Oh, I'm thank you. I'm gonna have to buy this tape myself. <laughs> None of this is in the notes. Okay. Hallelujah. All right. So so here's what they were basically saying. Um Jesus was saying, Come on up higher. And they were saying, Jesus, we got other stuff to do. People don't follow divine mandates because they're too busy for God. Sometimes we're so yoked to the natural things of the world that when God calls us, we can't flow with him. God, you know I got it. You know I got And that's part of what they're doing here. And, um, you know, uh, letting the excuses rob them of what God has. And it's interesting that in today's world, some of the same thing are keeping people from obeying God. I bought a land, investment. My job, you know, my job. I would do this, but my job is so demanding. When, okay, you pray for that job uh, first of the year. So God gave you a job. Now you don't have time for Him. Okay, we gotta we gotta backtrack and say that can't be God. You said it was God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the very thing, and that's what they were doing. Well, my job, is, and then, you know, I married a wife. Because some people use their family as, as, as well, God, I can't, you know, because my family, I got I to gotta be there, you know. And I, I, oh, I might get in trouble with this one. Yeah, but, <laughs> but sometimes we use our family as, as, as something that will cause me to stop or put God's plan for my life on hold or on the back burner. Well, he said, your loyalty to me has to be superior to them. And in fact, but he will not pull me away from my family. No, my family will be the better for it. You got to trust me on this. I mean, I, no, no, I can't use my family as a shield or as an excuse to, to not walk with God. Well, I got I to gotta keep my grandchildren. Well, bring your grandchildren to, to, the, to the things that they, you need to be training them up. They need to see, okay, grandmama going to church today, baby, because, you know, we're we going to honor God. Grandmama going, okay, I know you want to go, I know you want to go down to the popcorn place, but we're going to spend 10 minutes reading the Bible. They need to see you reading the Bible. They need to see you. What's that, grandma? That's them tongues. That's them what? That's them tongues. Yeah, they need to see you, you know. And it's amazing because they, they go right down that lane. Like, like my, my, my grandson, he saw me taking communion, so now he loves communion. So we take communion. We had to take communion before we got here Sunday. Come on, g Park, look at communion. He called it communion. He just like that juice. <laughs> That's okay. But, you know, when we pray, we're like, okay, God, go through the same thing. Okay, this is the blood. Hold it. Hold it. This is the bread. <laughs> this is bread for you. Broke it for you, your body by his stripes, you're healed. I said, okay, now break it. Okay, can I just eat it? He said, Thank you. This is what he does. Thank you, Jesus. Because I leave him in the confession. Thank you, Jesus. The divine health is mine all the days oh, of my life. Because you. Yeah. Hallelujah. And then we take, go through the blood. I go through the blood, the grape. And the, but he, he liked that part. <laughs> and he drinks it slow. I said, no, you got to like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, all at once, all at once. <laughs> he he want to nurse that little thing like it's a <laughs> like it's a little shot or something. <laughs> no, you gotta drink it, man. <laughs> anyway, but my point is, my point is, and I guarantee you, I remember one time God told me, I'll never forget this. I'll never forget this. God, God came through. He he just he just did something just incredible. I'm like, God, why you, I didn't even ask for this. He said, well, you got my pleasure with how you dealt with your son. You put me ahead of him. I'm not going to give you the details. But I'm like, oh, he said, yeah. He's good like that. Don't, you, don't put anybody ahead. Don't, 
I, I love her, but I don't love her more than I love Jesus. But she gets the overflow of my love because Jesus is going to teach me how to, how, to, how to treat her. And that's the order of God. So don't put your family ahead of God. Don't use them as an excuse. I'm, I'm, that's the Bible. Okay. So, now I'm sure deep down inside these guys knew <laughs> that, they, <laughs> that their excuse wasn't cutting it. But, uh, you know, they're like, okay, well, what, what are we going to do? Now, I want to go through some things. You know, I feel like I'm, I should have just put a chair up here and just talked to you from the big chair. Um, one of the issues of faith the members of the body of Christ is they same when they face with Jesus. The people, they were, people are ready to commit to him, but they only want to do it on their terms. Come in. <laughs> I'll commit. But it, it's got to be on my turn, Jesus. It's got to fit in to my lifestyle. Now, say this with me. Don't let, Don't let excuses, excuses run, your life. run your life. Don't let excuses run your life. Now, I'm going to go through some things. And I, and I, you know, I run the risk of you, you saying, well, you said, you said those things Sunday. I know some of them. I expounded on something. Because... You know what I do? After I hear the message, I go back over them. And uh, it's amazing how God Taylor makes it to me. Now, don't let excuses run your life. If you catch yourself using excuses, replace it with the truth. It's easier to say, I don't know how, than it is to say, I'm unwilling to learn. I think I was about, uh, I had to be about, uh, about 30, 30 years old when I learned this. Thank God. It's easier to say, I don't know how, than to say, I'm unwilling to learn. You, you know what I mean by that? It's, it's easy to say, well, it's a lie that you don't know. Well, it's not a lie you don't know how, because now this is called the information age. There is no reason you can you can go you can go on, on YouTube and learn how to do heart surgery. Now I wouldn't recommend you <laughs> find somebody to help you, but but you can go and you can find you can you can learn anything you want to learn if you're willing. So it's easy to say I don't know how to do that than to say, you know what, Pastor? Let me tell you what the truth is. What the truth is, I'm unwilling to learn. I'm lazy. Amen. Now see, who's that? Oh, that was you, Drew? Okay. Did you say that to yourself? You ever call yourself lazy? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I make excuses. Yeah. And that's why I didn't really like what you're saying. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, thank you. But, but it's the truth. And, you know, this sounds so simple, but if you think about it and meditate on it, it can shift a whole lot of things. Because the minute you say, I can't, I can't do it, you just cap your potential. <laughs> Even subconsciously, you cap it. But when you say something like, you know what? I'm, one thing my wife always said, the answer is on the planet. Yes. And all we have to do is continue to see Look, not, I talked about that Sunday. You, you, see, but you can't, I, I, I just don't know how to learn. No, tell the truth, because it's the truth that will. Yeah, so if I tell the truth, I'm just unwilling. I can do something about my willingness. I, can, I control that. And whatever you control, you can change. See, if I say, well, I can't learn. Well, well now you're saying that there's something wrong with you. But if you say, I'm unwilling, that's all on me. It's all on me. It's all on me. And whatever I can control, I can change. That's why it's so powerful. Oh, that's why you got to eliminate and discipline yourself not to go down that road with excuses. Every finisher has learned how to, how to take accountability and responsibility and not 
Okay, here's another one. I don't have time. See, whenever you hear yourself say that, you know that's not the truth. You know why? Somebody tell me. Because you got the same 24 hours Einstein had. You got 24 hours. So it's not, see, again, when you tell the truth, you put the finger on what you can control. See, you can't control time. You cannot, well, Elijah did. <laughs> but he was on the assignment. <laughs> he was the only guy I know the time. But other than, you can't control time. You can see all you want. Mm, Jesus, mm, mm. that clock gonna keep ticking. <laughs> right? Okay, so, so, so you're really saying, um, when you say I don't have time, <laughs> you, you're really saying um, this thing is just not that important enough for me. You have as much time as anybody else. The difference is where the priority is. This is this time. Well, Pastor, you know, I know I should have a time with God, but shoot, man, I, I got to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. What time do you get off? Well, I get off at three. Okay, well, from three till four in the morning. What do we got going? What, what do we have? No, the truth is, this is not an, enough of a priority for me to take some of my time and spend it on this. So we're not going to say we don't have time anymore. We got the same amount of time, everybody. God wouldn't be fair if he gave somebody else more time than he gave me. But it's about how I maximize and where my priority is on my time. Mm. Okay. It's amazing how people who say they don't have enough time, but they find plenty of time <laughs> for their trivial or marginal activities. You know, like TV, video games, and... Well, that's my diversion. Well, that's good. That's a good diversion. You don't need about 15, 20 minutes diversion. You don't need four hours. <laughs> I don't have time to exercise. <laughs> you don't have time to exercise, you don't have time to watch TV then. I told you, I'm just, just going to walk this down. I'll be done, I'll be done in a minute. You know, uh, I know y'all don't think this, but see, somebody that's like really carnal could be thinking, why don't he just get back to preaching? <laughs> you know what? Because, see, sometimes it's not a matter of how good the word is. It's a matter of what the word falls on. <laughs> and if it, it, yeah, it's about, and, and, I had to learn this as a preacher. I studied my little, I studied my, I studied a lot. <laughs> and when I get up here, I'm, I'm, I'm prepared. But my main prayer, I don't pray, Lord, anoint me. I say, Lord, I pray that the people's hearts. Because you can get a good word. But if, if, like, if you don't have time, oh, my God. I'm going to just say this. God, my time is up. If, 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 you don't, if you don't condition your heart to receive, and this is why I'm preaching this, but if you don't condition your heart to receive, I don't care how good a preacher is. Amen. It doesn't matter how, Jesus can come here and preach. And it, it'll do you no good. It's not about the preacher. That's what I'm saying. It, I, gotta, I gotta take responsibility for this word. So if I don't have time to exercise, don't say you got time to, 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 to you know, go to all the movies and not pay for all of them at the, at the movie place. Okay. Stop it. How many of y'all used to do that? I did. I used to. No, I'm in here now. <laughs> I don't do that. I wouldn't do that now. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that now. 
You know, and then and then you rationalize it. Or oh, they already they figured they figured such. They figured it such. They figured it such. They seen this man this man been here five hours. What you think he been doing five hours? He'd been to the popcorn stand four times. Come on. This movie ain't that long. Okay, come on back. Because I want I want to get through this list here. It's easier to blame the problem on a lack of time, but the real problem is lack of will. Okay, here's one. I don't know how. You don't know how. You don't know how. I don't know how. I don't know how. I don't know how. That's another. I don't know how to make a budget. I don't know how to, to lower my blood pressure naturally. I don't know, I don't know how to, uh, to, I don't know how to fix a tower, flat tower. I don't know how. Deb was talking to a young man Sunday and, you know, yeah. And, and she told him, she said, listen, <laughs> and you know, I was like, okay, thank God, amen. Because he, he, I don't know how to be no husband. And Deb said, okay. She said, see him right here? She pointed at me. He didn't know how to be one. But he went and learned. He went and read books. He went to seminars. He went to men's conferences. He went to, he learned. You can learn how to be a husband. And I go for whatever you need to be. Don't, well, I don't know how. I, he, he didn't have no father either. Man, you 40 years old. Okay, that, that dog ain't hunting no more. That dog gave up 20 years ago. <laughs> you know, I'm not trying to be funny, but I'm trying to, I'm try, I hope you see, well, you know what, I've, been, I've just been lying to myself with these doggone excuses. And you can, go learn, you can learn anything, not, you, I don't know how. That is so, that is so, you, how the, let, me, let me read what I said because I don't, you think I said this. <laughs> Are you capable of learning? Did you stop learning when you started walking? <laughs> no, the truth is I'm unwilling to learn. In other words, I have to admit that I'm lazy again. We can learn anything. I don't have the money. I that that ain't no excuse, that's a fact. <laughs> Let me finish. I, okay, I get that. You know, and and Miss Yuna, she she do, you know, and I'm I'm, I just you know praise the Lord. We have some offerings here that will change folks' lives, but it's not it's not it's not the prophet coming by and laying hands on them and then their finances are straight. It's a ten week class. Ten week? I ain't got no ten weeks. Why? I just ain't got 10 weeks. Okay. If it were five weeks, it wouldn't make a difference. Okay, where are you going to be 10 weeks from now if you don't come to the class? And you have to think. Probably 10 weeks broker. Anyway, we offer stuff like that. But uh, I don't have money. That's no excuse for not getting it. you want to buy something that's out of your price range. Well, first of all, you can, not, you can always generate extra income. Yeah. Now, that's going to cut off some of the trivial marginal activities. <laughs> but you can always generate extra income. How many people in here have a have couple income stream, i.e., extra job, or you got some money working for you? Raise your hand. How many of you got some extra? Okay, raise them up high. Okay, look at all these people. All these people. Yeah, yeah. And you probably don't get to, uh, you know, you probably don't get to watch uh, uh, TV land very often and reruns and stuff because you're not making these monies <laughs> because you didn't have enough for what you want. Now, some of it's out of necessity, some of it's because you want something extra. Here's an idea. <laughs> don't spend everything you bring in. And 
Don't spend and save some of everything you bring in. Don't spend it, but save it. We had, I remember, our living room sat bare. My, my son thought it was a playground. <laughs> when he was little, he did. He's like, ah, oh, because we put a little basketball hoop in there. And so he's in there playing basketball. That thing stayed bare for what, about two years? Because we're like, we, we're not, we're not going, because I knew what we wanted, the furniture. And I'm like, no, we, we, we're going to save up and pay for it. When it comes in here, it's ours. Ain't nobody going to be rolling no truck up in here talking about you didn't make a payment. <laughs> and so, so for two years, our living room, he thought it was a playground. We used to play ball in there. There wasn't nothing in there. Well, what would people, when people come up, what they do? Sit on the floor. Yeah. No shame in my game. I'm working on something. Yeah. I remember we drove that Honda. I had a little Honda Accord. That joker, my joker had a hundred some thousand miles on it. It had, it had, it had hail damage from Texas. Yeah. <laughs> it? And we drove up, I had that thing, and I remember, i never forget this one guy, he was visiting uh, one of the brothers, and he said, man, your pastor, your pastor, uh, your pastor needs some prosperity, don't he? <laughs> but guess what? I'm working on something. We're working on something. So don't tell me, well, I don't have enough money. You, you, need, you, you can learn how to do a budget. You can learn how to, how to, how to curb your spend. You can learn how to hit them sales. You can learn how to do them coupons. Yeah, we'll stop spending everything. Okay, um, how are we doing? Oh, shoot, I, I only got a few more minutes. Okay, I, my whole ex, this whole exercise is about, I want to impress on you, don't let excuses, don't let excuses uh, mess you up. Okay, what we can control, we can improve. I said that, didn't I? Okay. We can't control time, but we can control how we prioritize how we're going to feel that time. I remember mean, time, uh, uh, this guy said, you got, you got 24, you got 24 box cars every day. This is how I internalize that. You got 24 box cars, hours. You determine what goes in each one of those box cars. And if you don't determine, life will just feel, put all kind of stuff in there. And if you, if you, feel, you, feel, you, if you give each one of those box cards an assignment, you can control your life. And then he said, if you can't plan one day, one day, one 24-hour period, what makes you think you can, you know, talk about what's your five-year plan, 10-year plan, 20-year plan? He said, what makes you think you can make a 20-year plan and you can't even plan one 24-hour period? I'm talking about getting rid of excuses, but what this does, is it empowers you. It empowers you. Not that you're in control, but it empowers you. And then God can begin to open up opportunities for you that's absolutely crazy. Now, I want to close with this. I have three minutes and one second. With those 24 hours, God is moving to a place now of, like, your commitment to me deserves, your commitment to God deserves attention. It deserves time. It deserves, you know, it's, it's amazing how a lot of times we, we expect certain things, we want to experience certain things, but it, it, the, the seed hasn't been planted. I, I, you can control, you can control what you put in those box cars. You control that. And you just, you control that. And it, that doesn't change the whole the whole issue with him saying sitting down counting the cost. Sit down and count the cost. Like, okay, what's most important in my life? What's most important? What's most important? What's gonna give me? You know, I told you Sunday. I, I start looking at all the excuses. But I have nothing to show for these excuses. I felt good about them, making them, articulated them, but I had nothing to show for them. But when I thought abandoning the excuses and started saying, okay, you know what, friendly, because I, I was talking about 
friendly this is on you. Why are you, why are you being? What, it, this is on you. God's not going to wave a magic wand <laughs> over you. But you're going to have to step into some things. And so, so this fear thing, as we close tonight, you got to go to work on that fear. Go to work on that fear. Go to work on it. Don't let it push you back. Don't don't have it. Well, I'm just I'm just you know I'm just I'm just cautious. Well, you can't walk with God being cautious. I just gotta have everything lined up. You can't walk by faith with everything lined up. I don't want to say this to this person because they'll be angry at me. It's 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 okay. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Thank you, Father. Father, I've delivered what I believe you put in my heart tonight. And my prayer is that all of us, all of us, all of us, would eliminate excuses because we know you're bringing us into something spectacular like that dinner. They had no idea of the opportunity that were made available to them. So I ask you to put your finger on everything in our lives and help us to walk out with great confidence in you to walk beyond, to discard the excuses and become accountable, become responsible, and become people of integrity before God. You're not asking for perfection, but you are asking for character building and integrity before you. So I ask you to, to help us tonight. And then for those that maybe you're speaking to about the fear thing. I pray that they will step out of that. You've already spoken to them, but I pray tonight that they would walk out of there. Tr maybe trusting and trembling, but walk out of it. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord.